So in this video, I'm going to reveal what power secrets your car has for you, how you can actually listen to it, what it's saying to you, and easily understand what it's saying, all to harness the incredible power potential that's been hiding there all along. After the release of our video explaining how to create dyno charts from data logs, we were asked to go further in depth on the rest of the terms you see within them. So let's go through the common terms we use for performance tuning your car so you can understand and even interpret what's going on yourself. There are many tools you could use to listen to or data log your car, but most of them only support generic OBD2 values. In some cases, that's perfect. However, for tuning, we prefer to have a more in-depth view of what's going on. This requires special protocols the manufacturers use that open up a plethora of values for us to get an amazing picture of what's happening and adjust accordingly. For the purposes of this video, we'll use Durametric in these examples since it mimics the factory PWIS protocols and layout. The Cobb access port also does an excellent job with the logging and even provides additional parameters by modifying the values your ECU typically outputs. And although they're purely OBD2, HP tuners and ScanXL are a few other logging tools that fit nicely in any tuner's toolbox. So let's get started. Oh, by the way, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss any future releases. And if I've missed anything here or you need further explanation, feel free to point it out in the comments below. And I'll pause a second here for you to click on that like button since YouTube really loves interaction. If you're running a 997.1 turbo and have followed the directions for data logging your car from our website FAQ section at protomotive.com, you'll end up with a spreadsheet with a header looking something like this. And from that, we can generate meaningful charts and graphs to visually demonstrate what's going on with your car. Here's a few charts created from this exact data log. This particular log was sent to us to assess the performance of another tuner's kit installed on a car and advise them what to do next. If you're already an expert on these, take a quick look at these and let me know in the comments what you'd do if it were your car. If not, that's why you're here, right? We'll go through these in detail below and interpret these and help make it easy to understand what it is your car is saying. This log and these charts are from a 997.1 turbo with a basic bolt-on kit, running 93 octane, upgraded VGTs, exhaust, intercoolers, and a white pipe. So, so nothing, nothing crazy, 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 but there's a few hidden, hidden problems, problems in here. All right, enough of this juicy stuff. Let's get back to the meat of this video. Okay, let's start with the first column, engine speed, otherwise known as RPMs. We all know and love watching our tachometers race towards redline in every gear. But what is it actually telling us? Well, RPMs, of course. But having heard that millions of times throughout our life, what is it? RPMs are revolutions per minute, meaning in one minute's time, the engine revolves or rotates X times. That X is the number you see on your tack. In the above data log, the 732.75 and 742 and so on in the first column are the engine speed or RPMs, which is telling us the engine is sitting at idle. But even at idle is already whirling around over 700 times in one minute. And by redline, you'll be seeing 10 times that number for 7,000 plus revolutions in one minute. Why is this important? Well, the combustion process produces pressure on your pistons, pushing them down in the cylinder. This in turn pushes on the connecting rod, which is connected to your crankshaft. This action produces torque, not power. But how fast this action occurs is where your power comes from, or RPMs. So while producing the same pressure in the cylinder, which creates the same torque, you'll make 10 times that horsepower at 7,000 RPMs than you would at 700 RPMs. That's also why F1 cars scream to over 20,000 RPMs with those tiny engines, but make tremendous power, or why the massive diesel engines make massive torque at lower RPMs while not making much power in comparison. Okay, next up is engine load. This is a calculated value that's representative of the torque your engine produces. The higher the load, the more torque your engine will be producing as long as all the other parameters are in check. In general, approximately 100% load is about wide open throttle on a naturally aspirated engine, but not always. The little Boxster engines will show barely 85% load at wide open throttle, while a full-out GT3 engine may be showing almost 130%. 
This has a lot to do with the volumetric efficiency of the engine and how much torque or load it can produce without the assistance of turbos. So if 100% load is wide open throttle on a naturally aspirated engine, then 200% load is close to one bar of boost on a turbo engine. But some data loggers get stuck at 191% load, and that's due to the value they're looking at in the ECU. There are 8-bit, 16 and even 32 bit values flying around in there and the ones stuck at 191 percent are going to be your 8 bit values they're stuck because 8 bits can only represent 0 to ff hex or 0 to 255 decimal and the 8 bit also limits the resolution kind of like an old vcr tape compared to an awesome 4 or 8k display so be wary of that and the fact that you may be running a lot more load, but simply unable to see it due to the limitation of your logger. Durametric has no issue with this load value, and it'll keep going up until your map sensor gets pegged, since that's primarily where it's getting its basis from. On mass flow cars, it'll instead take the mass flow, divided by the RPMs, and come up with a load value. Hmm, that sounds kind of like the horsepower versus torque calculation. It's amazing how all these little puzzle pieces start to fit together. So, why is load important? Well, it's the basis for most of the axes and tuning, where we have RPM versus load versus timing tables, or RPM versus load versus fueling tables. Aftermarket ECUs may use RPM versus map versus timing instead, but they're very closely related to each other. Also, the load is where the injection timing is calculated from, along with a few corrections. So knowing what your load means in relation to boost and torque can help you understand if things are coming along well in your tuning. Intake air temperature is next up. Well, sure, even the weatherman talks about this one all the time. But in a turbo car, it can mean the life or death of your engine. Intake air temps, out of control, can be overspent turbocharging, massive boost loads, poor intercooling, terrible heat sink, or maybe it's just really hot out. In the 997.1 Turbo and 996 Turbo, the intake air temperature sensor is part of the MAP sensor and located right in front of the throttle plate. So it's not measuring ambient air temp, but instead it's measuring the actual intake air temperature going into the engine after the turbos have done their work the intercoolers have cooled the air to the best of their ability, and maybe your meth system is working hard to cool everything back down as well. And the intake air temperature sensor will tell you how efficiently that's all working. Inside the ECU is even a value called intake air temp hot. And when the temps pass that threshold, the ECU goes into a protection mode. So the cooler the better. In many cases, for each degree of air temp, we can reduce the temps you can make a horsepower. The cooler it is, the less prone the engine is to detonation. The cooler temps even lower your exhaust temps, which help out your VGTs by keeping them out of danger from seizing when the vanes overheat. So be sure to monitor your intake air temps closely, not only sitting still, but through the course of a dyno pole, road log, or even the racetrack and using that information to improve your cooling the best you can because lowering your intake air temps is vital to performance, power, and reliability.